Hello, YouTube and Patreon viewers. Most of you have been around long enough now that I think you can handle a test. Are you ready? Here we go. Question number one, and also the only question. What do we do when we read about a scientific study that conforms perfectly to what we already hoped is true? Is the answer A, share it on Facebook, B, forward it via email to your entire extended family, C, use it as justification to dig up past fights with ideological opponents, or D, get super fucking critical about it? That's right, the answer is D. And so with that in mind, I really hope that none of you have already gone on Facebook and shared the story about the scientist who discovered a mathematical proof for showing that conspiracy theories cannot be kept secret for very long, right? None of you shared that, right? You did, didn't you? I'll wait, go delete it, go delete it. Let me just say at the outset that I spent most of last week deconstructing that terrible evolutionary psychology paper, and I didn't have much left over for this one. Luckily, my good friend Martin Robbins over in merry old England took it on and did an amazing job. So you can read his whole report. The link is down in the doobly-doo. I will summarize it a bit and add my points here. The scientist in question is Dr. David Grimes, who claimed to look at various conspiracy theories to see how long it took for them to be revealed relative to how many people were involved in keeping the conspiracy a secret. In theory, that should be a really fun little exercise, but in practice, it was an utter mess. First of all, Grimes rests his entire case on just three data points. One is the NSA surveillance program, another is the Tuskegee experiments, and a third is an FBI conspiracy involving uh, fraudulent forensics results. And those three data points don't actually form any kind of noticeable pattern. And in addition to that, to figure out how many people were involved in each of those conspiracies, Grimes seems to just kind of guess. Like, how many people were working for the FBI at the time? Let's just assume all of them were involved. So the entire study is just three data points of conspiracy theories that have been revealed. Can you guess what other data we might be missing? That's right, conspiracy theories that haven't been revealed. Kind of tricky, admittedly. This is the toupee fallacy, which is the idea that a person might say, you know, I've never seen a good natural looking toupee. All toupees are bad. But in reality, it's just that they only notice the toupees that are bad. They don't notice any of the toupees that are natural looking. So in this research, basically, Grimes has only logged the bad toupees. So he can't make any uh, blanket statement about toupees in general. Only bad toupees are in his study. Now, you guys know that I'm no friend to conspiracy theorists. For proof, you can check out my previous video on how the attacks in Paris actually happened. Don't read the comments. Actually, read the comments. There's an interesting sociological study to be done there. But agreeing with the conclusions of a study doesn't necessarily mean that the study is a good one. So I do agree that with a conspiracy, the more people who are involved, the bigger it gets, the longer it goes on, the harder it becomes to keep it a secret. And so that is Grimes' conclusion, but I do not agree that Grimes has found a mathematical model to prove this. In fact, as Martin Robbins points out, Grimes commits a basic math error at the start, which throws off his entire model anyway. So this is not good science, and it's certainly not going to win you any debates with conspiracy theorists. One last thing I'll add to Martin's commentary. He points out that PLOS One, the journal where this was published, should be completely ashamed of themselves for publishing it and for their peer reviewers who all completely missed basic math errors and huge red flags all over the study. That said, I have to say, Having it published in PLOS One is a bit of a win because PLOS One is open access. So any of you right now can go and look at all of the data for yourselves. And that's huge because if it were locked away behind a paywall, there's a much lower chance that it would have been discovered to be complete bullshit. 
In fact, if you compare it to last week's Evo Psych paper, that was not only behind a paywall, but we couldn't even get a copy of it online for the first 24 hours. It was a bit of a nightmare. And so I guess what I'm saying, another way to put this would be to say that the more people you have looking at a scientific paper, the better of a chance you get to catch a bad piece of science and stop it from propagating. Huh. If only somebody could make a mathematical model of that.